everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber, and this is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. You know, we are so often pressured by the modern world to minimize the power of prayer, yet we know the role of prayer in our nation's long and remarkable history. Washington and the Founding Fathers prayed, our veterans and their families always have, and most Americans do, especially during times of hardship when hope is most often yearned for. A collection of stories with a similar theme, Faith Still Moves Mountains, discusses truly powerful stories of those who prayed and in critical moments had their prayers answered. To talk about her book, we are delighted to have six-time Emmy Award-winning anchor, national best-selling author, and our friend, Harris Faulkner. Harris, it's a pleasure to have you back with us. Thank you for joining. Rebecca, thank you so very much. And just hearing you talk about Faith Still Moves Mountains um, just makes the point even more in my life right now. I'm on a divine assignment and writing Amen. and talking with people about praying boldly is all part of that assignment. This is not something I could have done on my own. And, you know, just talking about, okay, Harris, what are you going to write about if you do a Fox News and HarperCollins book? And I said, let me pray about it and I'll get back to you. And that's what I did. And so I collected stories of miracles, as you say. But, you know, Rebecca, we're at a time where the, the real challenge can be and often is those things that come into our lives as trials and tribulations. But the other challenge right now is that we live in a world that would really rather we just give up the fight as, as Christians and, and a predominantly Christian Judeo nation. They, they really don't want that. And if you speak boldly about your faith, watch how fast they'll try to cancel you. I don't care. I'm unapologetic about how I worship and how I get through covering tragedies in those hard times. This book, I get to show people some of the stories that I've worked on and also some of the people who've survived who boldly talked about their faith. As a journalist, I'm tasked with being a witness, but I now am telling the entire story, faith included, and everybody is more blessed by that, especially me, the journalist. I'm great. You know, this is really wonderful, and I know that our listeners are going to be thrilled to get their hands on this book. It's been a few short years since your last bestseller. That was Nine Rules for Engagement, and that really focused on courage, duty, and patriotism, and your new book seems to reaffirm, really, and strengthen and deepen our connection to prayer. Uh, what called you to write about these stories of hope? I think you just began to share a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but what was that aha moment where you said, this is what I've got to do? Well, if you see me on scene somewhere, uh, this used to be more when I was a, a reporter, but it's still now as an anchor. When you see me on scene someplace, it's usually because there's been a disaster. Um, and covering people at their lowest points and at their highest points. I realized that in my journalistic years of more than a quarter century now, that people survived some things that I wanted to know how they did that. And I wanted it to be accessible enough such that if there's a miracle happening, let's tell everybody. And let's tell it in a compelling and memorable way. Let's tell short stories of the whole story of the Colorado theater shooting, of the mom who grabbed her daughter just inches away from the killer, James Holmes. Remember him with the bright orange hair? We know these stories. So some of what's in the book is ripped from the headlines and stories that we all would have covered in the news. But to go deeper and to find out, well, how did that mom get her two teenage daughters out of there? What was she doing? She was praying mightily the entire time. And she said, you know, we all think to pray during a proverbial storm, but if we could just pray when times are good too, if our children could see us doing that, if our teenagers particularly could see us during the pandemic, but also before and after saying, praise God, we will get through this. If it could be any other point in life, I'm raising teenagers and I'm trying to teach them that when someone asks you foundationally what you need, Tell them you need someone to pray for you and see what that friend says. I, I mean, I'm trying to teach them how to have those relationships with people who are clutch and to be that clutch person, to be someone else's blessing, 
you know, Harris, it is the best way, in my opinion, too, to really teach, especially your children, your family, uh, is they watch what you're doing. And it does take a lot of courage. You know, today, this modern world that we live in uh, certainly doesn't seem to support uh, prayer, certainly not in the workplace, not in school, you know, not at our, our public places. Um, it's a time in, in America when it's really so needed. There's such division. Uh, but I want to speak a little bit about the book, specifics in the book, because I was okay. really struck by the story of Tyler and Heather. These were two teenagers enjoying a day at the beach, and they suddenly met with a dire situation more than a mile offshore, fighting for their lives. Um, can you share with us some insight into your journey chronicling these amazing stories of prayer. So I mean, I you love, must have been so touched. What what I love about the story is it actually goes across generations. Uh, the the story is called Amen, because Amen is so integral to their rescue, and you just have to read it to believe it. Um, they they weren't just hanging at the beach. It was Senior Skip Day. They'd kind of gone out and waded out into the. They they'd done some things that maybe it was they were too big to think about doing on that senior skip day. Uh, and there weren't a lot of people around who could rescue them once they'd gone out into open water and couldn't get back. Um, and just knowing that they were literally inches from their lives. You know, there's only so long you can tread cold ocean water. Mm -hmm. And so they were getting tired. Our bodies do things, hypothermia can set in, all sorts of things can happen. And they're 17, these are young kids, and reflexively, young Heather begins to pray. It's before the storm, during, and after. Each story talks about that, but when you're really young, you probably haven't had a lot of years where you prayed on your own before anything would happen, just in general. We know faith mostly through our parents. You know, they took us to church, they took, you know, took us to, to faith events, whatever we were doing. I learned how to pray right. for my mother. We would kneel on the side of the bed in the morning and we thank God for getting us up that day. And she would look at me and she's like, Harris, he's not Santa Claus. Stop asking for stuff. Right. And she's like, you're supposed to listen <laughs> when you pray, Harris. Um, and so that's usually where we get that from. So what impresses me most about Amen, the story, is that their rescue comes about because they had already been praying as youngsters and had learned how to ask for God's help in the most dire circumstances. I want to hit one more because you talked when you introduced me about the historical nature of faith in our country. I learned so much from putting this book together because I never knew, and I grew up military, so I think I know a lot about the military. Well, I don't know everything. I never knew how much probably the most famous American general prayed, General George S. Patton. I never knew that he wore a cross around his neck and went to a chaplain before the Battle of the Bulge. And by the way, had we not won that, had we not won the end of World War II, the world would be very different right now. That, that great generation was praying. It's leadership in the military. Now look at our military today. And I don't wanna make this too much about politics, but we have to be careful tinkering with the things that have foundationally gotten us to where we are now. So when, when we take away people's ability to lean on what they know works, power of prayer, Patton knew it. Do you know that the Lord brought into my life the grandson of General George S. Patton for this book? Wow. It still moves mountains. Now, I wouldn't have just been hanging out at the Starbucks to meet him. Right. <laughs> Only the Lord brings those two <laughs> things together one way or another. And That's Benjamin right. and I are about the same age, and we talked about our, our history as military brats. And then he said, I want to share something with you. And I did a Fox Nation special. So this still sits on the Fox Nation website and app if people want to go watch it. He takes out his cross and he said, I, I still have the cross that my family gifted me as the oldest of the grandsons from my grandfather. Beautiful. And I said, you're wearing something from George S. Patton right now. And he said, and I have his scripture book handwritten with what he prayed before the Battle of the Bulge and what he prayed regularly. Faith is a part of our history, Rebecca. You're so right about that. And sometimes we have to be reminded because a journalist says, Lord, how do you help me? Or can you help me, Lord, write the chapter about Patton? 
yeah, the Lord can help with that. He can connect you with just the right people. Depression, drug addiction are two things that we are dealing with as a society in America right now. That's touched on heavily in the book. Because I want people to know that at their depths, when they've leaned out from God, when they think he's not hearing our prayers, he is. And I'm just the witness. The messengers of this are the people who lived through the miracles. And some of them, it took years. They don't sugarcoat it. They tell all of it. Which is which is really good, and what what makes this book so good, uh, and nothing, Harris, nothing can replace the power of prayer. In in my opinion, in my life, uh, in my own life, uh, it is something that is so special. And I think it's just reminding people too that you are wonderfully made, that there is a Creator God who loves you and who does not condemn you, and who wants to draw all of us near, all of us near. And as a Christian woman myself, I was so blessed and so. Uh, just, um, I'm so thankful to God because I had a, a, a remarkable grandmother who was instrumental in, in teaching me uh, my faith. And, and I watched her a whole heck of a lot. She did the same. She got down on her knees and prayed. And a father like yours who loved this country but put God first. And, and so like you, I want to encourage people to read this book, to open the Bible, and to just pause for a moment and think about how much God loves you. Because it sounds like a very trite statement, you know, people throw that around, but it is it's so the true. truth and it's powerful. It's life-changing. Matter of fact, I'm seeing things changing when it comes to discovering the power of prayer. Look, for example, at the, the tragedy during the Bills and Bengals game uh, earlier this month. Mar Hamlin. Uh, yeah, right? DeMar Hamlin, he collapsed on the field. Both teams gathered in prayer spontaneously. And then the fans of both teams began praying, praying together. Yeah. Uh, sports announcers, social media users across the nation joined in in prayer. And there was no coordination because when hope seems lost, I think that's where prayer is found. Does this tell us something about who we really are as a nation and, and who we should really turn to? I, I think it tells us something about all of what you just said who we are, I think it tells us about who we can be. And mm. I know that there will be people who are watching because you have so many people who are following AMAC. And that is a blessing to talk about Faith Still Moves Mountains to your audience. There will be people who are watching who are going through something right now and they don't feel like God is hearing them. And they have leaned out. I understand that. When my dad died on Christmas Day of 2020, I leaned out. I couldn't believe that my my parents were both gone, my children, young ages, and I couldn't believe how I could go on and be an example of someone who really knows the power of prayer and yet felt like I was living a lie. Like, well, why do I hurt so why why can't I lament and and know that the Lord has me? That's part of our journey. And one morning I, I got down on my knees. I was missing my parents, actually, missing my mom. And I connect with her when I'm in that posture because it's ingrained in your memory, just like your grandmother when she would pray in front yes. of you. It's a, it's a way to feel like, oh, I'm still connected to someone who loved me so much they gave me the, the gift of faith. And I began to pray that morning and the Lord quickened to me. And these are the words I want to tell members of your audience. I'm not done with you yet, is what the Lord said. I'm not done with you yet. And that's what he's saying to so many people right now. I'm not done with you yet. God isn't done with you yet. So lean back in. And when you do, the Lord leans into you and watch what mighty, mighty changes and victories on his time and per his will, he will usher into your life. You cannot make this happen on your own. But you know what? You can have faith that someone who loves you can. I'm not called to prophesize. Again, my divine assignment is as a witness. But I will always share what I found to be true and encourage people to know that their story isn't done being written yet. 
and that God will never give us more than we can handle. Uh, one thing I, another thing I have in common with you is my father passed in February of 2020, oh, and I experienced oh. much of the same emotion. Uh, he was my mentor uh, in, in more than just a father. I had worked alongside him for over 25 years. Wow. Uh, he was a true leader. He was a visionary. He was an idea man. He was funny. Uh, and he knew, uh, he knew how to really encourage people. Uh, he cared more about other people's success, almost more than his own. Uh, he always believed that he didn't need people to affirm who he was, oh, but God. God was his go-to. And so long as he felt that he was right with God, and you saw that. You saw that working in him. And so he was a man that, again, I, I thank God I'm so lucky to have had these wonderful people in my life. I think the fact that you can be that to so many people that may never really know you or meet you, but in reading these beautiful stories, you are changing lives, you are touching lives. And uh, it really, I'm just honored to have you here with us. Thank and I thank you, you so much because you are a true inspiration uh, and we need to be bold. Bold as a lion. Yes. Lots going on in this country, right? And so one thing we know for sure is that God wins every battle. He wins every war. And I love that message that he is not done with us yet. So we need to be patient, lean in in prayer and support one another. So this is this is wonderful that you were here. Congratulations. Faith Still Moves Mountains debuted as a New York Times bestseller, and we look forward to all things uh, you'll surely be called upon in the future, Harris. Uh, share with our listeners how they can get their hands on this great book. Well, right now it's still rocking as a bestseller. Uh, go to Amazon.com. <laughs> you can go to any booksellers, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, I love to shop at the places where I see people. So my daughters and I have gone to many of the bookstores and, you know, I'll be at Target doing something else. And my girls will go and they'll say, Mom, there's some people over there who want you to sign their copies. And I'll do it. <laughs> so I've been known to pop up and do spontaneous things. But we've had a fun book tour and continuing to have that. I've done a couple of digital events. And so pick it up wherever you shop for books. I'm an online type of person, generally speaking, uh, just so I can get it in my hands quickly. Um, but yeah. if, you, if you find a situation where you really want to get it signed, I'm here at Fox. I'm in Midtown, New York, Fox headquarters. You can send it to us, 1211 Sixth Avenue. That's in New York, New York. I'm on the 21st floor. Just send it to me. My assistant will get the book. And I'll sign it. I'll personalize it. Put a post-it in there. Don't make me guess who you are. And <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't do that so much in the beginning because so many people would come out. I started doing prayer circles. And we would just simply take the name of someone you're close to and pray and lift up our hands together. And I do them digitally now. I'll go out and do them at book signings. But I want people to feel a connection because whatever gets this in them is what's really important. That's where it all begins, that we're in this together. And you put that so beautifully. And you know, there's a section in the center of the book that's got glossy, it's a glossy insert with original prayers. They're very short. And whatever your topic is, healing, that's one of my favorites. I also mm -hmm. put the scriptural, um, inspiration so you can turn to the bible and go right in there and it'll if if you're like well i don't know if i can interpret the bible well it's already happening because you prayed a prayer within that topic now i'm going to send you to where that topic's being talked about and you got this um and the stories people i know will read over and over the prayers are very important because sometimes when you're restarting prayer in your life you don't know where to start but we're all going through something and the lord meets us right where we are it is such a joy and an honor to be able to talk with your followers, your listeners, your viewers. I'm so grateful to you, Rebecca. And, and I, I'm i with you heart to heart as our, our parents have passed. I know you lost your father in Feb 2020. I will pray for you. I will lift you up mightily that you might feel a peaceful soul. We will mourn for the rest of our lives. That's how much we love them. And when we cry, it's the shedding of that love. And that's okay. 
Yeah, thank you so much. You are my sister in Christ, and it is wonderful, just wonderful to have you here sharing these great stories. I encourage people to get your hands on this great book. Harris Faulkner, thank you for joining us, and I do hope that we can have you back again. I would love uh, You are one of our all-time favorites, and we appreciate your time so much. I hope you have a blessed day, and I'll pray for you too. We'll be praying for one another and for all of our great listeners out there. You're not alone. Get your hands on the book. Thanks again, Harris Faulkner. enjoyed this episode, you can listen to more just like it. Head to our YouTube channel or Rumble. You can also find us at bfapodcast.us. And you can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, or by downloading our free AMAC app. And don't forget to tell your friends all about us. Follow us on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.